What up my freaks, Ruinous and Psych here with part 17 of my Ratus, A Lord of the Dead Let's Play. Now I do apologize, but this video is going to be a bit of a weird one. Weird because after I had played it, unfortunately I had noticed that my old piece of garbage, Mike, had apparently died and no audio was recorded, despite the fact that uh, the software is showing that I don't know. Uh, it seemed seemed to be fine, but it's broken, and there's nothing I can do about it. Erotus is one of those games where there's only a single save, no auto save, so it's not possible to actually replay the damn thing. And uh, here we are. I'm going to try my best to uh, talk about what the hell it is, whatever the hell it is I'm doing here as we go, or most likely try to remember what it was I was trying to do. And uh, yeah, here we are. Here we are, so let's see. Ah, yes, mousing over the blood phantasm. I do remember that the goal for this particular episode was to uh, use the blood phantasm. Yes, yes, yes. Wave your cursor around past Ruinous. I'm not going anywhere. Uh, so uh, the reason for that cursor waving, as I recall, was the fact that the next set of enemies would require having the uh, physical damage team, and I was complaining about the fact that uh, part of the physical damage team, being the lost soul, is a little bit damaged, and I wanted to... Uh, set her up in the mortuary to heal her up but since the next set is a bunch of those golden statues we will have to bring the physical damage team to deal with them now let's just take a quick look at these artifacts over here i believe it was talking about the ring of the overlord which, give, which gives us full wrath but has the unfortunate side effect of uh, not going over the 100 wrath maximum of course one of the buildings in the graveyard does provide us a current 45 extra wrath at the beginning of each fight so in reality reality, the Ring of the Overlord is only half as effective as it seems, which makes it kind of not really worth it, in my opinion. Now Replaced it with a power fist there. Tremble before me. Well even more than previously. Yes, perhaps they're trembling before your power fist. Now, obviously, for the uh, for the non-dread team, for the physical team, the tempered blade with its plus six to damage is much more effective because it does uh, buff basically every character up compared to the infused dagger, especially when you have the power fist for whenever you need to cast the spell. Now, I obviously haven't been casting too many spells in this very very anti-spell casting floor with all those uh, mana thieves and those statues that increase damage upon erratus casting spells and all that stuff but uh, hey the options will remain in the uh, fifth floor hopefully it's not so uh prejudiced against spells as it were. Anyway, let's head out to this particular battle and see if we can't make it so that the Wrath actually, or not the Wrath, yeah, actually the Wrath, <laughs> gets used enough to unlock that Blood Phantasm. I'm actually pretty darn excited to unlock a new member of the crew. So let's see, Sources is gonna buff everybody up with that old rain thing. Dangerous Waters increasing damage by 30%, and obviously going to start up with an Abundant Harvest from the Headhunter. Not a lot of damage. I always, uh, I always am found, find myself really hoping that you get one of those lucky one or two percent kills with the abundant harvest, but it pretty much never happens. I immediately pop a substitute word world rather, not so much because it uh, buffs us up a lot with that single buff, but just to remove all those uh, thirty percent uh, buffs from the enemy. It is a pretty useful ability to eat their buffs, making us not necessarily need somebody like a banshee, especially when we're use we're willing to use the wrath to do it. Now, the Fallen Dampier has quickly grown to become one of my, uh, one of my favorite minions, not so much because of her regular attack, but because of her pretty low-cost, spammable ultimate abilities. I'm almost tempted to switch up the, uh, the way that this team works and just put the Fallen Dampier and the Vampire together, but in the back, with perhaps a skeleton and a, uh, and a, maybe a Blood Phantasm. I was thinking about getting the Blood Phantasm working with the two Blood, i.e. Uh, Dampier and Vampire characters. Hmm. That's an option. It's an option. We'll see whether it works out or not. That would mean replacing it, replacing the Lost Soul. But anyway. Anyway, obviously the statues are not going to take a lot of damage. Well, they're not going to take any Wrath damage from these skeletons. Uh, unnerving fortitude, as I recall the ability is called. Yet another. Embrace your new existence. 
Yes, Robus, yes. Repairs required, indeed. Abundant Harvest still doing quite a lot of damage. I am kind of wont to replace the Headhunter, though, in any kind of physical team, because that was a 54 damage crit just to one Golden Golem, and extra damage to the rest, and we took off the uh, block of another character. Abundant Harvest seems like a really, really useful spammable ability, especially when four enemies remaining. The Headhunter does so damn much damage. But then, uh, what do we do? And I guess we could use the Dampier and the Blood Phantasm as tank. Oh, there's a Power Fist, a little bit of lightning jumping around. Not too much damage, of course, but, uh, yeah. I mean, obviously, the Dread team is more reliant on spell casting than the Physical Damage team. The Physical Damage team can output said damage themselves just fine. Gonna pop an Ultimate Sundering Storm on the Golden Golem and <laughs> run crit. And a one dead golden statue to the great amusement of Eratus. Now, let's see. Oh, now that I think about it, I'm just quickly going to warn you guys, the audio to this might not quite exactly match the video. Obviously, I'm recording over my own video as I'm watching it, so... Uh yeah, I'm not going to spend too much time editing this because A, I don't have the time for it, and B, this is already taking twice as long as it normally would. Once again, a nice abundant harvest from the uh, headhunter there, but uh, yeah, hopefully it matches just enough. Alright, let's see what we got here. I probably could have targeted the uh, Spell Thief first. They are pretty weak, but the uh, Golden Statues did take quite a bit of damage. Once again, the uh, Skeleton with his Salamander skin is doing very, very impressively by forcing everybody to attack him and then uh, dealing 30 damage back, even when they don't have any Dread to damage. They still have health to damage. They always have health to damage. Huh, I wonder if there's any kind of special enemies that don't have HP, but only have sanity. Maybe some kind of ghost that you could drive insane? I don't know. Then again, our ghosts have HP, so, uh... Eh. Gotta figure out what kind of a, uh... What kind of an enemy would do that? I do believe I buffed the initiative of the enemies just to get a substitute word going in there. Substitute world, rather. I'm going to be confusing the name of that ability every single time. Alright, yet another one of these attacks by the damn here. Very, very nice. And a heal. Damn you, Conjurus, and your heals. How about you conjure some stuff instead of, uh instead of just outright healing everybody. Wait, is this the Conjurus? I can't remember the spellcaster's name now. I think there was a Sorceress, but I don't think this is the Sorceress, is it? I guess we're gonna find out in a few seconds. Yes, yes, target the Spell Thief. Come on now. Get another Sundering Storm going. Keep spamming those Sundering Storms. Easiest way to unlock that Blood Phantasm. And the Spell Thief is almost dead. Looks like an Abundant Harvest will break it off. No miss there. And a free crit on the Golden Statue as well. Alrighty. No, it is a sorceress, not a conjurus. Okay, okay. Well, then a sorceress should also maybe buff less and attack more. I don't know. Maybe just because of uh, just because of Warhammer, I'm used to more uh, damage outputting type of uh, sorcery. There we go. Right back into unnerving fortitude. And uh, stop healing. At least it's only healing one unit now. Probably a better idea to target the sorceresses first, but of course they do start with both armor and ward, which makes it kind of annoying, and all the free crits you get with the uh, abundant harvest makes it pretty quick to start killing other things earlier. There we go, nice hook on you and a free stun debuff, right, right, I do like that ability, of course it, be it becomes more and more useful as the enemies get less and less uh, units on the field, because it, uh, I believe it targets one out of three randomly, and it can't target the first position. So, yeah, I think that's the way it works. It does move somebody forward, and on top of it stuns them, but obviously, if you can't pick whoever it's attacking, it is annoying. But a guaranteed stun is nonetheless a guaranteed stun, especially on the sorceress who can't heal anybody while she's in such a state. There we go. No damage to you, Mr. Skelly Boy. And right back into Unnerving Fortitude you go. I believe this should be the last or the second last time you do that. What are you going to do, Lost Soul? And let's see. What's Past Ruinous doing? Looking at the Vigor. Why are you looking at the Vigor, Past Ruinous? You can't heal the Lost Soul. Apparently healers in this game are dedicated healers. I'm very good at healing themselves, or at least the Lost Soul isn't. 
I guess we'll see what the uh, other... Wait, if there even are any other healer classes remaining. Oh, wait, no, the Blood the blood Phantasm is sort of a healer class, which we will see when we unlock it. I don't want to spoil it. Oh, great, now I have to avoid spoiling what else happens in the future of this episode. <laughs> oh, man, okay. Ah, uh, what a weird happenstance. Damn you, Garbage Mike, for making me do this. And yes, yes, I, I will get a new one in the future when I can manage it. I know some of you guys have complained about the audio previously. It's, it's the mic, okay? I, I can't do anything about it right now. <laughs> Eventually. Alright, moving you guys around, why? Oh, probably I did that just so that the, uh, that the skeleton wouldn't move back to the third position, and that's so that the headhunter would move back to the third position, just so that they could use their abilities, because uh, the... Uh, uh, the thrust of the damp here did move her all the way forward. You are going to do what? Get another jagged hook? Now that doesn't sound like a good idea because you can't do anything with it. Uh, since it can't target first position, you are going to mark up the statue. But of course we need to get rid of its uh, armor so that we can actually make a use of said attack. Come on. I don't think you need to go back into Unnerving Fortitude. Feel free to sudden strike. Any kind of strike, really. Really, Forceful Lesson will move you forward. Put you in an ideal position. Nope, looks like a sudden strike, and... Oh, sudden strike... See, I shouldn't have done that. Sudden strike, I believe, ignores block, or whatever I just used ignores block, so uh, that thing's block is not removed, and we need to remove said block before the headhunter moves, but of course, it does seem that the skelly boy will move before the headhunter anyway, and I don't see it surviving much longer. Let's see if the Sundering Storm finishes it, shall we? I do wonder how much wrath has been used in this particular uh, battle. Pop the storm, pop the storm, sunder it. We can't use the uh, we can't use the uh, magical ultimate ability because of the golden go. Oh, it's the golden golem. I've been calling them golden statues. Whoops. Now that's damn. Leave Two crits would have finished it, but uh, yeah. What was what was I saying? Uh, this thing has thirty three magic resistance. Quite a lot there. Quite a lot. And we don't have any more wrath abilities to use. Oh wow. But uh, all four, well, five technically, of our characters, while well, the Lost Soul moves twice, will be able to move before the uh, poor Golden Golem gets to go, so, uh, yeah. Huh, it doesn't seem Wrath increases. Oh, it increased there. Was that due to the kill? Mop up the gold. Probably due to the kill. Alright, let's see what we got I here. A sacrificial stone, the minion restores 100% vigor when an ally her. dies. Yet another fairly useless, uh, item because we don't run into a lot of deaths obviously it would probably be more useful to have one of these in one of the higher difficulties i suppose we'll get to that eventually because i am really enjoying this game and i would like to try out the uh, two the two i believe two minions that are unlocked i think it's two not three uh, the ghoul unlocks from something. Oh, I'm oh I'm reading the blood phantasm stuff right now, aren't I? A rare example of a natural occurring undead. Some even put forth theories that these are actually some kind of aggressive blood elemental and write many an arcane thesis depending, defending their position. In reality, these phantasms phantoms are born from a single desire, revenge. Revenge against those that killed them, which in this case is usually erratas. But it's not too difficult to distort their perception of reality, making them see the form they hate most imposed over their enemies. Applying a few bindings to keep them from harming fellow minions, and they become splendid servants. Eratus takes special delight in the fact that they will spend an eternity haunted by his visage. Alrighty, um... I read that pretty fast because I was afraid that the, uh... Angry. The image was gonna pop off. I will use that against my enemies. So the Blood Phantasm is angry. Alright, interesting. Well, it is, uh, filled with revenge. Hey, Blood Phantasm. The reason I'm making three of them is two are required in the graveyard to uh, make use of some of those diggers' souls that we have. 308. Uh, better use them on something, and we needed this minion unlock. So there we go. Yet another Blood Phantasm in here, which will mean that we generate a total of 60 wrath at the start of every battle, which means that the Ring of the Overlord will only generate 40 wrath, making it fairly useless. I will probably actually destroy it in one of the future episodes for the XP that it will grant, as it will, uh, it's pretty unlikely that we're going to be using it over anything else with the, uh, with the limitation of the fact that it can't go over 100. I really hope that in a future patch or something, it'll allow you to go over 100 wrath. I mean, it's not like you can save up wrath anyway, so I don't see why you wouldn't, uh, why you wouldn't allow it. 
Anyway, there we go, the Blood Phantasm. Let's see, oh, time to read the abilities. Impale, basic attack moves you forward a little, deals 80% of damage, and deals a little bit more damage versus... It's a bit more of a crit, another attack, Phantasmal Assault, so it's a basic attack with restoring HP. Okay, okay, well that does seem like it belongs with the uh, Dampyr and the Vampire. Transfusion, a stance when receiving direct damage, restore vigor to all allies, equal to 14% or 40% rather, of the Phantasm's attack. Well, that seems pretty interesting. Would making the Blood Phantasm a sort of pseudo-tank maybe put her behind, or him? Put it behind the skeleton? Can't tell. Can't tell. It's a Phantasm, and we can only see it's... I mean, it's bony, and it's really... The model is so small, I can't really see its face. Hard to tell. Eh, it doesn't matter. It really does not matter. Crazy, evil, blood elemental. Uh, let's see... I don't know why I'm hovering over the Lost Soul right now, probably comparing their healing abilities, whereas the Blood Phantasm does seem to actually be able to heal itself to a degree. Uh, Mark of Retribution does force attacks, marks a minion for two turns, and causes the minion received return damage. Oh, that's interesting. Right, I remember this. The Mark of Retribution, imagine putting that on the skeleton, which, will make, which also has the Salamander skin, and it has the uh, Dread Damage, in addition to this Mark of Retribution, making the skeleton cause crazy, crazy amount of damage. Some nice synergy looking like over there. I'm pretty excited to uh, start playing around with this thing more. Yes, I like that very much. Ooh, and even more, 140%. Damn. If you buff up the Blood Phantasm's attack and place that, that would be pretty nice. Now, let's see. Chains of something. Uh, Chains of Anger deals addition. Oh, come on. Stop it. Stop it, Past Ruinous. I'm distinctly going to dislike you. Uh, deals additional damage for each buff and debuff on the target. Deals some damage. Okay, that's kind of interesting. It might... Uh... Huh. That would make it sometimes good with the Lost Soul, but sometimes bad. I suppose you could use it before a substitute world, and that's probably why I'm mousing over this. Hate Eternal, the ultimate ignition. Deals 40% 8 to 8 damage, sets targets on fire until the battle ends. Quite a high cost at 50 wrath there, though. But it is interesting that it is for the entire battle. Basically, use it at the start, and it's a permanent debuff, especially for enemies that can't eat debuffs. And this might be an interesting option. Hmm, pretty excited to try that out. Yeah. Oh, okay, so one of the options basically uh, makes it a lot cheaper to cast, but the other one increases the damage that the Blood Phantasm deals quite a bit. Alrighty, now it's time to check out which direction we are going to head out into. This direction obviously has cultists, and I have said before that I do really like me some cultists, go figure. Um... Hmm, but there is a quest in... Oh, there does seem to be a quest in both directions, so no matter where we go, we are going to run right into a quest. I don't see... Oh, okay, but if we go left, we run into two elite squads. Hmm. Alright, let's head to the coffin first, see what kind of... Ooh, another Halo of Chaos at the start of each turn. The menu receives one random bonus until the end of turn. That's interesting but it's really unclear what kind of bonuses it could be i really wish i knew that's the reason i decide not to take it 30 stress damage with each attack against the minion also an interesting ability if we had taken if we had for example given both of the spiked head and the salamander skin to the skeleton it would do even more stress damage in addition to its uh, physical damage i was trying to get out of this to see uh, to go over some characters to uh, take a look at this Hmm. Yeah, but I think Salamander Skin is probably once again the best. I mean, oh, they can't stack. I believe you can't have two of the same kind of item. So I wouldn't be able to put two on the uh, on the skeleton. Not that it wouldn't be cool, but I think what I was thinking here is, A, we could put one on the Blood Phantasm or somebody else who serves as an off-tank. Alternatively, what we could do is uh, just hold it as a replacement in case our dear old Skelly Boy dies. And it would be really unfortunate if he did, but at least his uh, most powerful uh, item, i.e. the... Uh, i.e. the salamander skin would still be there and it's time to level up the blood phantasm we do want to take it into battle with us after all and this is probably going to take me some time of thinking 
<laughs> ah, doesn't it always? Doesn't it always? So, what do we have here? Aura of Retribution, more damage. I'm probably more inclined to... Oh, wait, I think I just go straight to... Ah, I took a look at what we get out of this. Enemies that attack the mark the minion more often. I feel like... Is that even necessary, attack the Mark Minion more often? The Skeleton already has A, Unnerving Fortitude, and B, the Jester's Visage. So it gets attacked basically at least 90% of the time. Would the stacking of this really help all that much over the damage? So yeah, we could remove maybe another 5% off. I don't know. I'm obviously just guessing at these numbers. I doubt that you could completely max it out, but maybe you can. But even if you could... I feel like there's pretty massive diminishing returns in that regard, so I feel like the 140% return damage seems like it would be better. It would also make the Phantasm a little bit more tanky, granting it a little bit more of the old armor. Alright, what do we have here? Uh, Rage Injection allies gain plus one attack and plus one dread until the battle ends. So this stance... Hmm... So you could heal more or you could buff allies up. 10% uh, more healing versus buffing the attack and Dread of the Blood Phantasm and buffing the entire team. That seems pretty good to me. Because that's essentially a plus 3 attack and Dread to the team every time you use this. Plus still maintaining the 40% heal. Seems like a really, really good option. I'm really liking the... Uh, abilities that the Blood Phantasm has so far. Now, the Chains of Anger slash Fury, uh, more damage, buff, not buff. I feel like I didn't really care about this one that much, and I was uh, starting to look less at the amount of damage that they dealt versus the uh, the little sword, the attack vers versus the uh, armor that it provides, or ward that it provides, or resistance that a freaking hell. <laughs> uh, resistance that it provides. Man, I hope that the audio is more or less synced. Uh, I'll just edit it a little bit. Try to, I'll try to sync it at like a few points. Anyway. Anyway, still looking at... Oh, this time I'm looking at how much it costs to uh, upgrade stuff. Pretty low cost at first, but obviously until you invest some points, it's kind of hard to tell where the costs oh, lie exactly. For a nasty surprise. There we go. I think I got that ward or resistance piece to uh, balance things out. Uh, this time I go for the initiative. I believe I recall this correctly. The upgrade on the left... Even though it uh, it is nice to hit with more crits, the Blood Phantasm doesn't have a lot of luck, but more importantly... Oh, the Savage Impale hits two enemies, but so does Impaling Charge. Yeah, more importantly, you can't upgrade initiative. So the only way to ever upgrade initiative for the Blood Phantasm, it seems, is that one single ability. Considering the Blood Phantasm's initiative is at a pretty darn low four, it is a pretty darn decent I idea to always get this upgrade results. just for the initiative, if nothing else. If it's the only way and it's the only time you get it, you might as well get it. And now let's take a look at Hate Eternal to Wrath or Torment Eternal. Uh, I'm thinking... I actually don't remember what I was thinking of this, but I would imagine the 10 Vigor is worth a less than plus 2 attack and plus 2 Dread. And I do kind of like the extend duration of all debuffs on targets by one turn except stun effects. I mean... I mean, the except stun effects is kind of unfortunate. And this just does a little... Hey. The, oh, the left one just costs a little bit less Wrath. I feel like the Wrath isn't such a huge deal because you're probably only going to be using that attack once at the very start, even though that would make the extension of all debuffs on the targets fairly useless, unless this got combined with something that had some kind of crazy debuffs. And I don't think we have anything that's really, really debuff-reliant, except for on the Dread team. And uh, I just don't see the Blood Phantasm fitting in with the Dread team that well. Unless we were to make a sort of mixed team with, say, the Blood Phantasm and the Skeleton on the one hand, and then the Shade and me maybe well, the Wraith on the other. And there we go, as expected, going for the uh, increased damage and dread. Feature of the Blood Phantasm, something about death, damn it. <laughs> I didn't get to read it there. Oh well. Ah, uh, Chains of Fury. Now, pretty unlikely to use this ability because I am foreseeing using the Blood Phantasm in one of the foremost positions, probably second position right behind the Skeleton. 
And yeah, once again, I don't particularly care for this ability for the uh, buffs and uh, debuffs that uh, the extra damage causes. I feel like I'm very unlikely to use that. Even straight up, like, causing damage is probably going to be less effective than putting the Blood Phantasm into a stance and just increasing everybody's attack and dread for the uh, rest of the fight. And plus, in the unlikely event that it gets hit by something, then we can just, uh... And then we can heal everybody with the Retaliate stand, so I don't really see too much use for the uh, Chains ability. However, I do believe I recall in this episode I do use it at least once, so uh, I'm eating my words already. Alright, alright, that's enough of this. Come on, Pass Ruinous. Hurry up, hurry up, pick a thing, anything. I don't care now. <laughs> now I know how you guys feel. Ah, <laughs> oh, damn it. Uh, in my defense, this is the first time I'm playing this or seeing any of these characters or what their abilities do, so I'm trying to think up synergies and stuff on the fly. So, uh, yeah, that's a, that's as good of a defense as I can uh, as I can think of right now. Oh, damn, the Lost Soul is very, very close to leveling up, and so is the Headhunter. Uh, dude, past Ruinous, just come on, how are you, how are you, how have you not decided uh, <laughs> yet? Damn. It's got, it's got to have been like two minutes at least of this. It's it's just chains. You will never use it. I'm, I'm sure you're thinking of some kind of uh, crazy synergy with these things, but uh, ultimately it doesn't really matter. Pick one. Pick one. Do it. Yes. Please. <laughs> ah, man. Okay. Damn it, and I don't remember what synergy I was thinking of with this. There must be a reason why I was thinking about this ability far longer than any others. By the description, it doesn't sound like it's, uh, it's crazily confusing. So I must have thought of something that relates to some other character, but because the audio didn't get recorded, I now have absolutely no clue what the hell it was. Uh, right, well, right now, it's clear that I'm looking at the attack versus the resistance, but it was the buffs and debuffs I was probably thinking about it. Maybe I remembered a character that uh, could generate a lot of different ones at the same time on the same character, although I, um, like, I'm trying to think of that right now, and I don't believe any one character can do more than one debuff per turn. I mean, the Lost Soul has two debuffs that it can apply, but uh, it's probably not worth it. Hmm. Regardless, doesn't really matter all that much. Uh, let's see, gonna put some, well, as much as possible into attack simply because the stance of the Blood Phantasm does seem pretty good since it does heal everybody. And, oh yeah, and the uh, mark. The mark that he can put on the skeleton, or anybody really, that uh, causes retaliation damage. Said retaliation damage is based on the Blood Phantasm's own attack strength which obviously means that uh, that it would be best to buff said attack strength as much as possible. Hmm. But of course, uh, if we're going to be using it as a secondary tank, and the fact is we can't we can't Get give it any... Uh, battle. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Chose it for a little bit of extra attack. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, so you can't get ward or uh, armor... Or block. You can't get ward or block on Blood Phantasm, similar to the fact that you can't upgrade initiative. You can only get armor and and uh, resistance, therefore, you should be careful with it if you try to use it as a secondary tank, or a second line tank, or an off tank, whatever we are, uh, whatever we're calling the second position these days. There we are. And that looks like all the abilities. A decent amount of accuracy. This thing is not going to be missing a lot. It's got uh, 15 and 16, a luck and evasion. Uh, pretty okay. I mean, the there is an off chance that they work out with something, but it's the attack and uh, all the other stuff that is uh, that really matters. There we go. There we go. And now I have taken out the headhunter from this team. 
And once again, I'm looking at the Mark of Retribution, trying to figure out whether this will actually work on the Skeleton. And uh, Mark of Retribution and Transfusion do seem like the main two abilities for this freaking thing. I think I've seen some sort of... Uh, some sort of synergy with the Fallen Dampir, judging by all this fancy cursor waving, but damn me if I remember what the heck it is. Next episode, when I uh, play with the Phantasm some more, I'll probably try to come up with these... Uh, would come back with these synergies. Anyway, it's probably just about time to try these things out. Uh, Taking a quick look at these stats that everybody has. Come on now. I want to try that Blood Phantasm. Let's go, let's go. A little bit of Dread, a little bit of Attack, sure, sure. I mean, it does, uh, we do return Dread damage, and we do occasionally use Attack powers. Oh, wow, we have seven stats in the Lost Soul. I feel like I was saving that for the, uh, for the armor and the, uh, hmm, for the armor and resistance, and for some reason, I think I decided to hold on to it to get Vigor instead, mostly because the, I think it's because that, uh, it seems more worth it at this point, but I'm not entirely sure. It's not like the Lost Soul pretty much ever get hit, gets hit, really, so it's not like it really matters that much. Just gotta make sure that everybody who's set up in the arena to gain XP between fights has exactly what they need, and there we go. I do like to put in those who are close to leveling first, and those who are the lowest level second, and that is done. Let's head out into the dungeon. Come on now. And head out to the next battle. Try that Blood Phantasm out. Pretty exciting. Let's see what it can do. There we go. Now, we don't have the Abundant Harvest now that the uh, that our dear friend the Headhunter provides. So, back into Unnerving Fortitude immediately. You are going to attack the Skelly Boy. He's not as powered up as we would like to be. Wait, what the hell? Huh. And I just realized that the Thief... Oh no, the Thief did take 8 damage. Why did it only take 8 damage? Does it have a crazy amount of armor? What the hell? No, it has a crazy amount of resistance. Huh. I, oh, I guess Salamander Skin returns uh, magical damage, not physical damage, which would... Meh. Yeah, that would explain why the uh, Spell Thief doesn't take a lot of damage from this. Alrighty. That's fine. Lost Soul. Uh, you can, I believe, immediately... What is this? A muck target minion loses 12 luck and gains 6 attack and... Oh, 12 attack and 12 dread. That does actually seem like a pretty powerful ability, and I feel like I should be using it more often. Considering the fact that some characters have a lot, a lot of luck already, it might not be a bad idea to uh, increase some damage. Alrighty, easy little lucrative uh, boon on you, and time to mark you up as well. Why, why am I still looking at that amok? I don't think I'd put it on the Blood Phantasm, Ray yeah, put it on the damn here. Lose 12 luck, make it go from 50 to 38, but power you up considerably in terms of damage. Fallen Dampier at 60 to 62 straight up attack. Imagine its ultimate ability with that. That should be pretty darn powerful. And yeah, you... No, not Rage Injection. Where's that mark? St don't chains, don't chains. Mark of Vengeance right here. 140%. Even more return damage on you, Skelly Boy. Do it. Block, 6 and 31 damage. Pretty good, actually. It doesn't seem like a lot, but you have to remember that these characters all have a lot of uh, resistances. So, uh, it'll be a lot more powerful for some other characters. Now, you, Sundering Storm. Right? Right? Where's this? Hey, right. Use one of your more powerful abilities. Thank you. Right there. Oh, no cred, just three times straight up 30 damage. A little bit unfortunate there, but it's okay. At least the golden statue will, or golden golem? Is that what I was supposed to, oh, damn it, I forgot his name already. Yeah, and yet again. Uh, at least it has lost all its armor, so the other character should have a much, much easier time killing it. Alrighty. Uh, you are still Price of Glory, but you do need another Mark of Vengeance refresh on you. I didn't realize two turns had passed. I thought, uh, I thought it had only been one turn. Huh, weird. Or maybe it got debuffed somehow. I'm not entirely sure what happened there. 
Nah, it's all good. It's all good. Uh, what am I looking at right now? Price of gold. Oh, yeah, see, right now I'm trying to figure out what the hell uh, removed that buff, whether it was uh, one of these abilities or not. Because I swear the mark is supposed to last two turns and it ended up only lasting once. But I could be wrong. I could have been seeing things. I'm still trying to find what the hell could have removed it. But maybe nothing did. I'm not even sure it's that easy to remove marks. But anyway, another one of these volleys should finish My you off. There we go. Comes. Hitting a lot harder now. 45 crits, and that's what? Like nearly 150 damage from a single volley? Pretty darn nice. And you just got buffed up twice, Ms. Dampier, because of your feature and stuff. So it is. It's still okay to keep you in second position, although you do have armor and stuff. Oh, and that's an easy insanity on the spell thief just because the uh, skelly boy returns both damage and dread now I'm, I'm i'm shocked at how useful the skeleton is considering it's like it's literally the most basic minion you have and yet i feel like it fits in with basically any team Interesting, but I suppose that's its point. It's a jack of all trades, master of none, but if you call uh, returning damage and taking hits a trade, I think it's certainly a master of those, although obviously we have not seen the bone golem yet. So uh, when we see that, maybe it'll be superior to the skelly boy, who knows? Who knows, because it does seem like the uh, bone golem will be a tank, because all the other golems we've seen have been tanks, although of course they've been enemy golems and not friendly golems. Not that I expect the Bone Golem to be a friendly golem, but a minion is what I mean. Uh, let's see, Torment Eternal, Ignite Everybody. Am I really thinking of doing this? I think I think maybe I'm, th I'm thinking of doing this just to see what it looks like. Oh, that actually looks kind of cool. <laughs> just like throw burning blood on him. There you go. I don't like the concept of a blood elemental. Although, saying it's a phantasm makes it seem like it's some kind of ghost, not elemental, but uh, sure, why not? Why not? On the, and who said a ghost can't be an elemental? What is this? Uh, nobody refute that. <laughs> Alrighty, come on now. Aim for the heart. Uh, oh, I think I'm trying to uh, use something to recover a little bit of vigor from a possible crit, but didn't luck out with a crit there, unfortunately. There we go. A little bit more damage on you, but of course the... Uh, Ooh, hope there will still be enough left to reanimate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the good things about having the Dampier in the second position, and the reason that I put her there, is that anytime anybody uses any AoE abilities, she takes it and therefore buffs herself up, but does not function as the main tank, since I don't really trust the Dampier as the main tank. Tank. And her buff is actually, or feature, is fairly lackluster. She only gains one attack, I believe, from every time she is attacked. So she has to get attacked a lot, and I mean a lot, to get a real good buff out of it. And let's see what we have here. Am I going for aim for the heart again? I think I wanted to recover HP. There we go. Nice crit single attack for 98. It's not quite ultimate ability damage, but it is quite a lot of damage nonetheless. And critted you back up and then immediately get hurt since you're going to need more heals. Fortunately, one of the thieves did burn alive after taking that. Or did it, uh, or did it die from reprisal damage? Honestly, it doesn't really matter. It does not really matter because a dead is dead. Although Erratus would probably disagree with me as there are many shades of dead. And let's see what we're looking at here. I'm probably de trying to decide whether to go back into Unnerving Fortitude or just straight up outputting more DPS because uh, the enemies are quite close to dead. And looks like I decide back into one more Unnerving Fortitude but the enemy should be dead quite soon. And uh, it's probably pointless to use Torment Eternal as they are already on fire and they can't be, uh... Really? Did I really use this twice? No. Really? Oh, yes, I did use this twice, and the reason was I wanted to see whether it stacked, whether you could uh, put a bunch of permanent uh, burning buffs on them, because true damage is also nice. I believe true damage can't be blocked by uh, resistance or by ward, or by resistance or armor, rather. And I wanted to see if you could keep stacking that, and apparently you can, so that does give it some worth to go for the other upgrade, not the upgrade that we went for with the Blood Phantasm. Your frail bodies fail you. 
Yes, yes, Aratus, relax. Uh, the upgrade that we didn't go for, the one that reduces it to a 30 wrath cost instead of 50, making it a lot more spammable. So it is an interesting use of there. Hmm, maybe combine it with somebody like the Lich, who does damage to allies? Just uh, use the Lich to burn everybody and use the Blood Phantasm to burn everybody and just ignite everybody. Huh, that's one kind of team that we don't have, an all-ignition team. That would be pretty interesting, actually. Oh, you're trying to escape? How dare you? You know, you don't get to run from this spell thief. You don't get to thief and run. And I think I'm looking at Moaning Chains here. Mostly because I want to see what it looks like. There you go. Pretty nice animation. Whenever I get a new character, I like to try out all the abilities, even if they don't seem effective, just to... Uh... Wow, we got both Wizard Bones and Sharpened Bones again. We have copies of these items already, and I've already found them to be fairly useless uh, right now. We got a piece of Light Armor, which is also kind of... Man, I mean, first two turns of battle minions receive 25 less damage. Ironically, it seems that the light armor is much better than the uh, heavy armor, which we have deleted earlier. It is worth a lot more experience. I believe the heavy armor was like 400 and the light armor is worth 1600. Might be pretty useful against bosses and stuff like that. 25% less damage is pretty decent. Hmm. Hard to say. Anyway, to the cultists we go. I do believe the Blood Phantasm needs its uh, its special item, and let's see what it is. Looks like this. Crimson Chains. Each character attacking the Blood Phantasm receives Ignition that deals 20 true damage each turn for three turns. Aha, very interesting. Another reason to have the Blood Phantasm serve as a sort of pseudo-tank. I suppose if we weren't to be using the Skeleton in a team, what we could do is put the Blood Phantasm up front as a straight-up tank, and then keep the uh, Dampir as a second line tank. And even though the Dampir does have the repost ability which heals her, I feel like you shouldn't rely on that because uh, we've seen on the second floor some enemies are very, very powerful and can almost one-shot you. I mean, the first Dark Knight that we had did die instantly to a, uh, to a suicide explosion, as I recall. And then there were two or three really, really close kills with those Berserkers that do insane amounts of damage. The Dampir isn't actually very uh, resistant to stuff. She does have evasion, but if she gets hit, she will take a lot of damage if all her uh, block and ward are gone. So uh, gotta be a little bit careful there. Anyway, Elite Squad up next. And I'm taking a look at these things. Let's see, there's one statue, but three... Three enemies that are susceptible to dread damage, so I think I decided to uh, bring the dread team out for this one, which would allow us to heal the lost soul. Unfortunate, I think I was taking so long to decide because I wanted to keep playing around with the blood phantasm, but it is what it is. It is what it is, plus I suppose we haven't uh, had the dread team come out to play in a while, and they are a staple. They are so damn powerful, they're all so synergistic with each other that that's fine, and just before I forget, gotta apply those uh, Crimson Chains to the Blood Phantasm. You would think that it already has plenty of Crimson Chains, but I guess we can award it with more. Eh. You know the old saying, you can't have too many Crimson Chains. And I think I was even tr contemplating putting a Salamander skin on it and uh, using it as a straight-up mainline tank. Although, you gotta say, it's, let's see, it's Vigor at 110 and the fact that it has no block, I mean... It's nearly as tanky as the Skeleton, but uh, not when you take in cons into consideration Unnerving Fortitude. Unnerving Fortitude makes the Skeleton crazy tanky, and it does return a lot more damage in terms of the... Uh, in terms of both Dread and stuff, although the Blood Phantasm does also return damage, so, you know, it's a toss-up. It's a toss-up. Why am I... what am I doing now? <laughs> Why did I take those guys out, out of the arena? I don't know. <laughs> I guess I had some other thoughts. You do you, past Ruinous. Yeah, it's it's weird when you don't have uh, any idea what the hell was going through your past 
<laughs> for your own mind. Ah, all right, and putting the Tempered now Blade back in because the... Oh, wait, um, taking the Tempered Blade out and putting the Infused Dagger in because the powerful increase. spell that it casts is quite a bit better than the uh, Six Attack, which is absolutely useless to the Dread team. And, of course, taking a look at the Rings now because you can't really use two spell items. It is fairly useless. It's fairly useless, because there's a cooldown, unfortunately. I suppose magic would be overpowered, but I feel like there should be an upgrade to reduce reduce the cooldown by one turn or something like that. And yes, take the Power Fist out so that the uh, more powerful Infused Dagger spell can be used. Although, arguably, it does less damage, a lot of single target damage. And, oh, I thought that the uh, Fortune Magnet was a ring there, but unfortunately, it's not. Let's see, critical hits, and we don't actually have many powerful rings. That's the, uh, that's a disappointing aspect of all this. We have very many, very powerful, uh, talismans. I guess... Finally, this item finds its way to my capable... I guess necklace artifacts are just playing better than ring artifacts, I don't know. Or maybe I've just been horribly unlucky with the rings. And, I mean, I do like the Ring of the Overlord. I like the concept. I just uh, don't like the fact that it's... Uh, it's at 40% usefulness right now. So, it's, it's basically we have a 40% of a Ring of the Overlord. So, it's meh. It's just plain mad at this stage. And wow, Radis is at level 49. I didn't realize how much he had leveled. I wonder if he has a max level. I don't recall the game ever telling me whether he does, but it would be unfortunate if he maxed out at 50 and we couldn't uh, go further with upgrading his abilities. You'd, you'd think the game would tell you about that. Hmm. Anyway, yeah, all right, so now I'm thinking about using one of these uh, one-time use abilities because, or abilities, items, just because we have more of them than we will ever use, especially since I only take them out for bosses and for elite squads, so here we go. Dread Team once again into the elites, and we have a really golden golem over here, an elite sorceress buffing everybody up, and ah, right beside you is what, a conjurus this time? I take it that's a conjurus and a sorceress? Honestly, to me, the Conjurus looks more like a Sorceress, and the Sorceress looks more like a Conjurus. Do you know what I mean? I sound crazy here. I don't know, I feel like it's because the uh, the Sorceress has all these, like, feathers and, like, antlers and stuff. That seems more conjury to me, whereas the uh, Conjurus looks like a straight-up... Yes, yes, crunchy indeed. Uh, looks like a straight-up uh, archetypal Sorceress. Eh, I don't know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter, let's get to our uh, OP combo, that's a no tomorrow stance, and just start using everything that we can to debuff the enemy. Of course, the uh, shade starts out by uh, spamming its wrath ability everywhere on the enemy. Oh, am I going to use Black Radiance? Oh, that's a, that's a rare use, I suppose. Really? Or, or is it Shadows Within Shadows, as always? What do you think it passed me? As always, okay. I guess past me is not as much of a kind of a novelty of novelty as present me. All right, yeah, you're gonna do nothing to the wraith. Good luck uh, getting through the wraith's uh, evasion. Anyway, actually, forty percent evasion doesn't seem like all that much. Now I think about it. I mean, it's good, but uh, you'd think it would be more considering that it's a very uh, evasion reliant character, and its uh, item gives it more evasion based on all its warden blog. And it's going to be dropping quite a bit with all of that stuff removed. As the enemy is focusing on it. Yeah, one of the things I really like about the skeleton is just the fact that it's predictable what the enemy will do. Like, a lot more predictable when they will attack one single character. And that does add a lot. There we go. Keep debuffing there, Sandy. Of course, both the Conjurus and the Sorceress had wards, so uh, we weren't able to damage them quite a lot like that. Uh, you're going to go back into No Tomorrow. I'm actually surprised I didn't use the uh, spell to finish off the Spell Thief immediately, because I very well could have. If I had used the spell here, the source, the Spell Thief would be dead, and the Sorceress would move into a spot, taking damage from the... Uh, Oh. <laughs> part of the time. Okay, that is indeed what I do. Okay, good job, past me. We think alike. Go figure. Uh, one more Shadows Within Shadows, I think, on you, just because uh, 
You never wanted to put it in the uh, last position because one of them will be dead soon and then you won't be able to use them. Panic Blast will move them around, force them to take damage as always. Typical combo, very, very overpowered. Go, go, go. Get that Panic Blast in there. I wish we had a minion like the uh, like the Golden Golem. I really li I, I like the aesthetic. It's pretty cool. It's, uh, it almost reminds... It's, uh, uh, what am I thinking of right now? Tomb Kings. It reminds me of a shop tea. That's what it does. All the unnecessary gold. I mean, it's not nearly as Egyptian as uh, the Tomb Kings are, but still. It's 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 about as golden as they like. There we go. Do we have double insanity? No, just the single insanity thus far. Oh, and you guys will get healed up. But of course, we have the shade. We have the gloom claws. It is not that your health matters because you will all get killed by the shade except for the golden golem who will just gloom claws you all to death. And then we can just magic the... Uh, we can magic the statue down with a golem down every time. <laughs> ah, every damn time. Alrighty. Let's see what we got here. We could use Ravenous Abyss to cause more health damage to them, although I feel like it's not really necessary. Just keep spamming spells. There we go. There we go. Because of Gloom Claws, we can get so much mana back that uh, I really don't see any need to uh, avoid using Gloom Claws. Now, the good thing about taking Vigor with the Ravenous Abyss is, of course, that uh, it's essentially true damage as well. Well, it's actually HP removal, not damage, but uh, you know what I mean, so no resistances and all that stuff matter. And I think we should be focusing on just damaging the, the uh, Golden Golem. Oh, there we go, and now we get Insanity on you. Golden Golem buffs itself up. Probably we should have actually tried to do something. You are going to try to retreat slash escape Conjurus. Is that a good idea? I don't know, because the Shade can kill you. And will kill you, momentarily. Come on now, use something. Anything on anybody. <laughs> Doesn't matter. They have no chance. Dread Team is victorious. I'm always surprised that the Dread Team doesn't really take damage, especially considering the Dread Team can't really heal itself. Like, uh, I just realized the Dread Team really has no sustain except for the Black Knight, or Dark Knight, uh, which can uh, restore its own vigor, but none of the other characters can. I believe I did that to remove your ward. Oh no, I did that to move you- oh no no, you moved forward because of Slippery Ice. Eh, doesn't matter. Void Claws, kill the Conjurus. 640. Ha ha ha. Oh, it's ridiculous. Oh, that's ridiculous. I'd love to get one of those on a boss. I'll say Crush Bones might finish it, but it will take a lot of our magic. However, uh, it's kind of difficult to uh, kill these things now. I mean, we could just keep using abilities, but the thing is... Okay, remove that block. Ah, oh, did I really decide to just not use Crush Bones? Come on, just kill it. Ah, oh, ah, oh, looks like we're gonna keep doing this. Alright. Oh, but the Golden Golem, unfortunately for it, also doesn't really do anything. Ha, huh, it's interesting that the uh, Slippery Ice Trap is still there. You can see it under the Shade and the uh, Banshee. Kind of interesting that they're slipping on ice. Considering A... The Shade and the Wraith, neither of them have feet, or possibly legs. <laughs> so I don't know what the hell they're slipping on, and all of them are floating, and also they're also ghosts. So, uh, yeah. Ghosts, and not immune to ice. Go figure. Or the slipperiness aspect of ice. Go figure. Alrighty, come on. Oh, it's taking so long, I really wish I had just used the, uh... The magic thing. I think I wanted to save our mana, that's the thing, because if we had used it here, we would be fairly down in terms of mana for the next round, and you do want to have it for emergencies. Alright, this thing should be very, very close to dead. Come on, get a far grasp in there. Far grasp. Come on, pass me. Will this kill it? No, but it's very close. It's very close. And you, I believe, have no way to kill it. Uh, you can use dark uh, dark gate to restore something right yes dark gate thank you 
There we go. Restore a little bit of mana. Get a little bit of a buff. Doesn't really matter. You can't do physical damage, so you're kind of useless. A cursed doll is probably a good idea. It's not a lot of mana. Just use it. Use it yeah. past me. There you go. Move those Damn, it, it's so difficult for the Dread team to finish those characters. Ooh, what do we have here? Hero's Blood, the minions... Minion deals 50% damage and becomes immune to damage debuffs during round one. Uh, so basically a big opener, but then it becomes completely useless after that. Huh. I wonder if there's any minion that uh, really has a crazy synergy with that. Like some kind of other minion that does crazy damage at round one. Hmm. I wonder. I wonder. I mean, honestly, plus 50 damage and only during round one. I mean, the immune to damage is not horrible. But, uh, I mean, in the skeleton team, it's kind of useless. I I, I know I'm mousing over it because I'm trying to think of a synergy right there. And we did get a level 22 brain as well as some items. Robes of Potence gain 8 luck, 8 accuracy, and 8 evasion. Probably worse than what we currently have. Another weird mandolin. We don't really care about its ability to put people to sleep because uh, it puts us to sleep. I.e. it's useless. Well, it's probably not useless, but uh, not as useful as some stuff we had. Now, there is another set of enemies here, and we are quickly running out of time, but I think I think at this point I decide that regardless of the fact that it's probably going to take time to get there, I like the idea of facing some new enemy types because I'm interested in what they can do, so I will take the extra few minutes to go into the next battle. So, what do we have here? I uh, don't know what I'm doing. Am I really using another one of these things? Temporary item, or uh, one-use item. Consumable. Consumable. That's the word I was looking for. Damn, it's really late here, okay? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, let's see. Power Fist probably should replace something. I'm probably trying to decide whether I'm going to use the Dread Team or the uh, Physical Damage Team. Come on, pass me. Uh, let's go. Once again, don't need both the Infused Dagger and the Power Fist, and yet... I think I, I think I just decided that uh, we're running out of time quickly, so just head into the battle. Or not. What, what, what the hell am I doing? <laughs> what are you doing, me? All enemies lose 8 initiative until the end of combat. Why? why? He demolishes my undead Maybe I use that because it seems relatively useless. I'm not going to use it otherwise. Do I feel like that'll speed up this particular combat? Is that the reason? Who knows? Who the heck knows? Come on, come on, come on. Ring of the Overlord. Just put it in or don't put it in. It does not matter. There we go. Sure. <laughs> Let's get to it. I think I'm worried about the fact that it seems like there are two new enemy types and uh, we have no idea what they do, so we've run into some pretty damn powerful enemy types before, and it's obviously going to be a concern there. You never know what craziness you might run into in this game. I, I learned that the hard way when that uh, first uh, suicide unit blew up and... Uh, and killed that first Dark Knight. Ever since then, I've been pretty wary. That's probably th that's probably why that type of unit was on the first floor. It made me wary. And then the second floor, of course, as I was saying earlier, had the Berserkers. Let's check out what new enemies we are facing here. Ooh, what do we have here? Some kind of floating lightning guy, Stormcaller. Uh, one should not fly too close to the sky, unless one happens to be a Stormcaller, in which case, it's already too late. It's not exactly known why, but in order to finish their training, these mages need to use their power to lift themselves several kilometers into the air, and then make it all the way back down. Those who manage this feat seem to be pulled upwards no matter where they are, wielding crackling energy that has them rarely touching the ground. Neat, neat. So some kind of lightning mage, basically. And it's got a lot of luck and evasion stuff. And, aha, a Zoidberg, or a Chaos Spawn. And it's called a failed experiment. Failed experiment, the end result of many experiments at manipulating life and attaining immortality. Sanctioned in secret by the Grand Magister. This unpleasant collection of flesh is highly unstable, but effective in brief encounters where the volatile magic that sustains it makes it into a sort of living flesh bomb. Almost inspiring, really. I don't like the living, the sound of living flesh bomb. Is this also... Does it also explode? These don't explode. Feature at the start of its turn, if it has less than 25% vigor, it self-destructs, dealing 100% magical damage to all minions. Aha. Uh, that's interesting. That's interesting. So basically, you have to kill it. But 
it's pointless against oh stormcaller abilities increase initiative by three so he basically always moves first and then gets a special ability when he has a max initiative sure sure but uh we don't care about the self-destruct abilities of the uh, chaos spawn because this is the dread team it's not going to do physical damage to it it's going to straight up drive it insane i'm actually surprised that this thing can be driven insane in so far as it's not already insane I guess it's a really sane chaos experiment that is a living flesh bomb. Okay. Or failed experiment, rather. I'm, I'm going to be calling it chaos spawn and chaos experiment. You guys need to get used to that. <laughs> uh, it's, it's pretty unlikely that I'm going to uh, be able to call it anything else. Anyway, anyway, as usual, not going to start with... Why am I looking at Void Claws every time? I really want to use Void Claws every time, but and anyway, wow, 89 damage, you always want to use that ability first, right away, because it's uh, based on the max HP, so it does most damage right away. Easy little curse, and start with driving you and Zan, already uh, quite in there. There we go. Alrighty, what do we have here? Accelerando. There we go, two wards removed, a little bit more uh, damage with the no tomorrow. M my spells... Yes, indeed. Okay, you do some kind of basic lightning attack, and you're already insane. That was real quick. <laughs> uh, let's see. I wanted to see what that debuff was, but couldn't quite tell. And lots of wards. Yes, yes. You're in your stance now. Oh, poor, poor failed experiment. It's having a bad time today, isn't it? Right back into no tomorrow we go. We are indeed Legion. And two more wards removed and another curse. Yeah, this thing is going to... Uh, this thing's going to die of a heart attack. Surprise it only has one heart. Oh, instead of blood on it, you can see it's turning more green. I wonder if that's supposed to uh, represent its weird greenish blood, or whether that's supposed to be like necrotizing flesh, or something like that. Huh. I like the design either way, even if it is a little, uh, typical. Nah, doesn't matter. It's so cool. All right, you are going... Ooh, what is this mark? Hey, I wanted to read that mark game. Uh, Purging current minions that attack the marked character receive 56 to 59 magical damage. That is a lot. That is a lot of damage. Damn. Gonna have to be careful with damaging you. Purging current, not bad. Not bad at all. And I don't believe anything we can use can actually remove marks. I do believe the Banshee has the ability to destroy debuffs... I think I actually tried to remove the uh, the mark with it just to find out. Ooh, there's the heart attack on the poor field experiment. It has failed in many ways, I suppose. All right, not time for gloom claws yet. One more shadows within shadows, I think. Let's get to it. Huh? I do wonder. Will the mark do anything if you use shadows within shadows? I feel like it shouldn't. Because it's not really a straight attack, right? Ah, damn, I should have tried it. I should have tried it just to know how it works. And there we go, this is what I'm going to try. Not an Accelerando, even though it would be interesting. A Desolate Scream, because it removes debuffs. I'm curious to see whether marks count as buffs or debuffs. But I don't believe they do. And it does seem that it... Oh, it did get removed. Ah, oh, but it just goes back up. <laughs> That's annoying, but it does seem that despite the fact that it removed, it does hit the Banshee first. She took a lot of damage, so we should be really, really careful about that mark, because I mean, damn. The Banshee is now going to need to, uh, to take a trip to the Mortuary to heal up. Alrighty, what do we got here now? And it looks like no tomorrow. And you, can you use Gloom Claws? I think you should be able to finish off the Stormcaller now. It will move you forward. Oh, but the damn Conjurus... Or is that... No, yeah, that is a Conjurus. Uh, the damn Conjurus is about to escape, so she needs to be killed somehow. And I think the only way we could do it is by using a spell and some other abilities. Spell, please. Spell it. Spell her doom. Ask me. You know there's only one way to do this. There you go. No, 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 what are you doing? <laughs> Target the Conjurus, thank you. There we go, insta-kill. I don't know why I thought about that so long. Although maybe I, since I've actually, well, I mean, 
this is me playing it. I probably partially remember some of the stuff I did. Damn them all oh, again. There we go, us. and that's two dead, and now just the marked up fellow left. Of course, we can't attack him until the mark dissipates. Uh, so I think we're just going to use abilities that avoid doing so until then. Uh, that will be a... Doesn't really matter. Use something. Use survival. Buff yourself up. Get a little bit more evasion, a little bit more block and ward. You can wait until this guy loses the buff. There we go. And looks like you're just about to die. You're trying to escape as well. It seems like every single one of these characters want to escape. Huh. Which is interesting because I was trying to figure out what escape was in like the first two floors and then suddenly everybody wants to run away. Alright, finish this thing. Void Claws and that should be it. And there we are. My will is a tide that will wash away your pathetic civilizations. Yes it will. Yes, it most certainly will. Ooh, what do we got here? Amulet of the Dream Eater. Uh, decrease the critical hit strength of enemies. Meh. Minions gain six dread until the battle ends. Okay, Ring of Darkness. You are going to come in handy for the dread team, finally. That will be pretty darn useful. And let's see what we got, what we're looking at for heading into uh, next episode. We do have a direction to pick now. We can go right or we could go left. Hmm, I don't remember what I'm thinking about at this point. All I know is there's like less than a minute left in this episode, judging by the clock of what I'm looking at, of the audio, audio less recording, or rather the voice over less recording. So I'm just going to uh, call it here. So with that said, as always, I do appreciate any and all feedback regards to the gameplay or the way I do things on this channel. If you have a second, please do take to leave a like and or a comment to support the channel. It really, really does help. As always... All glory to the algorithm, and thanks for watching. And I suppose we'll pick the uh, we'll pick the path next time, huh? Shall we? I gotta refamiliarize myself with this anyway. And anyway, yes, a ring of the Overlord. You are going to be replaced by that ring of darkness for the dread team, but that's something for next time. Blah blah blah. Thanks for watching.